go. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the Zoomer Hall Concert Series. I'm Bill Anderson, and today we welcome an all-star supergroup that's come together to resurrect heartfelt and often defiant Yiddish songs from World War II, songs that for many, many years were thought to be lost forever. And to help us learn the rest of the fascinating story is my co-host. You know this lady. She is the voice of Nocturne on the new Classical FM. Please welcome Marilyn Lightstone. Bill, the maximum that truth is stranger than fiction has never been more true than it is here today. After 75 years where this music was lost in limbo, it is now back again, alive and well, and this concert hall will prove it to you. Uh, after the first song, In the Green Mountains, I'm going to talk to two of the people who were very instrumental in bringing this music back to life. Well, to hear that song, we need the band. I would like you to put your hands together and say welcome to the Yiddish Glory Band. First of all, we'd like to hear an example of the kind of music that we have for you today. It's a song entitled On the Green Mountain. In World War II, the Germans wanted to invade Russia to enjoy the country's natural resources, but they went away with nothing. Bye. 
Arco nach dem Grinem Geräusch Schmeien sich die Deutsche Loch Ar oben gelöst die Nuss Nu voi ce far voi a chelăr Zai dir doha țint Ech funali zai Niza zoh un vei un vint Don't nit ștei, don't nit gai Oi, se-ți nit gut Deutschland is a zore, Hitler is kaput. Deutschland is a zore, Hitler is kaput. Und schön. Yiddish glory continues with two special guests in conversation with my co-host, Marilyn Lightstone. I can't stop doing the yeah, da, da, da. <laughs> it's very catchy. I'm going to introduce you now, the two people who brought this project to life. The prime mover, of course, is Professor Anna Sternschis, well. who is the acting director of the Institute of Yiddish Studies at the University of Toronto and her musical partner, Sor Karolenko, as you just heard, vocalist, but also philologist. Now, I at one time thought that a philologist was someone who just loved literature and poetry, etc. but it is not. It is a serious profession, and it's because of that profession that we have the music we have here today. A, first of all, Anna, can you tell me when this extraordinary event happened to you, how it happened and your reaction, and then we'll talk about when you, we got uh, together with Soy. So a few years ago, I found this box of sealed documents in Kiev, which had a lot of handwritten, very poorly preserved Yiddish documents on them. It took me a few years to open the box, to actually read the documents. But when I did, I realized that they have hundreds of previously uh, never heard, never recorded Yiddish songs. They were written in Ukraine in 1943, 1944, in the middle of the war, and they told a remarkable story of Jewish resistance to the Nazi invasion. They talk, told the story of bravery and story of never giving up. And when I saw those documents, I immediately called uh, Pavel Leon, Soy Korolenko here, and said, don't you want to get some new repertoire? Let, let's work on that. Tell us about what the job of a philologist is, how you really put together the music and the words and make it come alive again. In this project, I have been not exactly a philologist, but as uh, Dan Rosenberg appropriately puts it, uh, archaeologist, musical archaeologist. This is a very interesting metaphor because uh, I dealt with songs which mostly came to us as just lyrics, and I had to suggest the basic melodical solutions, which later go to musicians who make it musically more abundant, arrange this. Mm -hmm. So uh, some songs uh, clearly suggests some tunes which go from Jewish or Soviet or both music from those days or from nowadays, even sometimes. There were some anachronistic solutions mm -hmm. which went very well with those songs, organically well, naturally well, intimately well. Uh, they sounded like they could have been written then, and only a few songs uh, have had music with them. They are also included in the, um, this repertoire, this our mutual repertoire. So uh, what I did is to suggest melodies taken, uh, compiling melodies from Soviet and Yiddish culture which are um, in sync spiritually, emotionally, uh, content-wise with these lyrics. Sometimes wrote some basic melodies uh, by my own. And then it went to Sergei Erdenko, who arranged those and also wrote a lot of new instrumental music for these songs. When this first happened, did you think this is a life-changing event? for me, for the Jewish people, for musical history. 
How, where were you at the time when, when this all happened? Were you, were you at the computer, at your desk? Where, where were you at that very moment? I, I was where I always am, and in the library in front of my computer, actually um, magnifying the documents so I could see them. But once I was able to read them, I understood that such documents and such materials come to scholars once in a lifetime. There is no uh, better way of saying it is that you're finding a needle in a haystack, and some, usually it's just a needle, but this time it was a jewel. It was a jewel high, hidden and buried, and it's a jewel that told the story of people who wrote the songs, but also people who risked their lives collecting these songs in Ukraine in the 40s. They all went to jail after. They never told anyone about this project, and we, they thought their work, the work of their lives was lost forever. But nothing is lost, and 70 years later, we were able to find these documents and find treasures in them. It was a very, very special moment for me. So now the music not only has a past, but it has a future. Where do you see this music going after this concert? Once the world becomes aware that it exists, what do you personally, the two of you, hope will happen with it? going to take the world. You know, in the, in the past week, we've heard the, uh, parts of this repertoire, Yiddish music being played on all major radio stations in Toronto. I think Wonderful. it's a good start. You know, I think this, uh, this project, and the, because of the musicians who are involved in it, because of this amazing talent that we got to this project, this will revolutionize the way we understand Yiddish music today, and we will understand it in the future. Well, certainly, we have most extraordinary musicians here today to interpret this music. And uh, I keep thinking, of course, of Fiddler on the Roof. Whoever thought that a story by Sholem Aleichem would become world-renowned, that its music would become world-renowned? And who knows, perhaps the same thing will happen with the music from Jewish glory, Yiddish glory. Will it become a musical? Well, it could become a musical, a musical drama, an opera, perhaps. The story of how the music came to light. One never knows, but the music is there, and it, it is so powerful. It's something we, we all feel in our bones. And uh, I, I, well, I, I can only imagine where you might go next. Who else is involved in bringing this up to the world? Can name me a big organization. Is YIVO, for example, involved? Actually... The big organization that, got, that is really involved here is Show One Production and its director, Svetlana Dvoretska, Perfect. who took a leap of faith uh, and after one conversation made this show into life. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Marilyn. What a fascinating story. And I am looking forward to your other conversations a bit later on in the program. But right now, what do you say we have a little bit more music? And this time, it's uh, about a heroic man named Yoshka from Odessa, the bravest soldier who fought without mercy. Hey, 
Bor ir halt sich für ein wahrer Lele Pass es wird mein Fun Aschmal Fun A ne Bele Pass es wird mein Fun Aschmalen Fun ne Bele Se welt mit, welt mit die Lieder klingen. Wie sie es vorgekommen dort mit Joschke dem Odesser. Als ihr Gott geschlagen hat sich, sich mit dem Feind auf Messer. Als ihr Gott geschlagen hat sich, sich mit dem Feind auf Messer. Thank you.
Wonderful. That's a song called Hey Germans, about uh, Yoshka from Odessa. It featured a uh, vocalist, uh, Sergei Ardenko, and our fabulous Yiddish Glory Band. I want you to meet their accordion player now. His name is Alexander Sebastian. It's awfully nice to see you again. Likewise. How did you put together this group? And please introduce them all to this audience. Oh, it's my pleasure, Bill, to introduce this uh, wonderful Yiddish Glory Band. I will start to my left. On guitar is uh, Michael Savichev. On the piano and the violin is Arthur Gerbenka. On uh, trumpet it's uh, David Bookbinder. On the clarinet it's um, Shalom Bard. And the, myself on accordion, Alexander Sebastian. And of course the artistic director of the Yiddish Glory Band, wonderful violinist and vocalist, Sergei Erdenko. How about a wonderful round of applause for all of these fabulous musicians here today to share this great story and this great music. We're going to take a short break. Marilyn, you have more people to talk to, correct? I do indeed, right after the break. We'll be back. So where are you next performing? Uh, this uh, coming Wednesday we're performing at the Richmond Hill Center for the Performing Arts. And the concert will be actual world premiere of this program. It will start at 8 o'clock and it's a sold out show. The music that was found that was hidden was it hidden by Jews in concentration camps or was it hidden by non-Jews who were Jewish sympathizers? I'm um, sorry, can you answer this question, please? I don't know where to look, though. We'll, we'll go into the center. Um, the, the music that was found here was not written in concentration camps. It was not written in um, uh, ghettos. We actually don't know where it was written, but a lot of songs came to us in forms of letters from soldiers, Red Army soldiers uh, who served in the war and wrote in Yiddish. Some, uh, some songs were written in Central Asia, where 1.6 million re Jewish refugees found rescue during the war. You will hear later a song called Kazakhstan that speaks specifically about that experience. We also have some songs written by people from places that were being destroyed as the song was written, such as a place called Tulchin, where out of 3,000 Jews who lived there in 1939, only 20 survived the war. And we have some songs written by people just before they went to their death, writing the songs and mailing them, hoping they will find their audience. A lot of leaps of faith, and now you are able to hear this music. I just want to say thank you and a great evening to Herrn Yiddish. I'm from Kovno, from Lithuania. I was in the ghettos in the concentration camps, and it's a pleasure to hear the Yiddish word right here in Toronto. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Hi, thank you very much. First of all, it's unbelievable uh, effort and fantastic opportunity for us to hear you. Uh, I presume not everyone in your band understands or speaking Yiddish, so was there any attempt to translate it into their native tongues and maybe publish it as a poetry book? That's number one. And two, how important is it for musicians to actually understand the words to put the soul into the music? I think you should ask musicians. But let me just say that not everyone in the band uh, speaks Yiddish, speaks Yiddish every day. Let's just put it this way. But, <laughs> but everyone in the band knows exactly what we're singing and why. We have time for possibly one more. Okay, yep, Ken. Yep, Ken again. Just go down How did the music... 
How did the music come to be collected in this archive? It was uh, collected by a team of uh, Soviet uh, Yiddish ethnomusicologist, Marcia Berigovsky, who, re who, created the, who recorded all these uh, songs in order to publish them in a book called Jewish Creativity in the Soviet Union during World War II. But the book was never published because Berigovsky was arrested by Stalin and all these materials were arrested as well. And they were believed to be hidden until we found them a few years ago. Welcome back to the Zoomer Concert Hall. I'm Bill Anderson here with Marilyn Lightstone, and we're continuing our presentation of Yiddish Glory in Next Marilyn. It's a wartime song, the story of a young boy who leaves his mother's grave and asks in desperation, who will care for him now that his mother is on the other side of the river? Yiddish Glory Band. is Isaac Rosenberg. What a wonderful performance, Isaac. Yiddish Glory continues with more of the background story. And here again, my co-host, Marilyn Lightstone. Hello. 
Hello, Sophie Millman. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. No stranger to our audience. No. Sophie, we know you as an award-winning, Juno award-winning jazz singer. Uh, I know that you're a great lover of the great American songbook. What brings you here? What brings me here yes. is uh, my background. So I'm, I was born in Russia. I lived in Israel for nine years. But um, I sort of absorbed the story of Jewish struggle during the Second World War through my grandparents who talked not very much about it, but talked enough for me to feel the burden that they, lived, that they carried their entire lives and to know a little bit about what they went through. And when these songs came to me through Anna, I just, I could not get involved because these songs tell the stories of my family. Though I remember a concert in Montreal where you said to your audience, when people know that I'm from Russia, they want to know about the KGB. Yeah. They want to know about <laughs> Stalin. Yeah, and my Russia true. is the Russia of family, family yes. stories, warmth, love. Mm -hmm. So you've come a and long way, And a little way, bit baby. of Stalin. <laughs> well, you know, it's um, my, again, as a, my experience as a child is holidays and, and wonderful family moments, and which pretty much ended when we moved to Israel and the rest of the family stayed in Russia. Mm -hmm. But... My first experience, for example, with the concept of death, not to be all dark here, but uh, this is a bit of a darker project, um, was when I was five and I found my grandfather crying over a photograph of a mass grave where all of his family perished. All the family that didn't evacuate east or didn't go to the front passed, you know, were, were killed by the Germans. So it's, um, it's, even though my memories of Russia are generally positive ones, there is that heaviness that uh, Russian Jews carry, and frankly, all, all Jews carry because of what our people have been through. Mm -hmm. Well, your mention of family has given me the perfect entree to my next question. Mm -hmm. Now, ordinarily, I would not ask private questions of my interviewee, but in this case, I've asked permission from Sophie. There is a new addition to Sophie's family. Can you please tell us yes. a little bit about that? Yes, so um, I, ha I gave birth to a daughter a month ago. Yeah, so... I have to say my effort to be my efforts to be here have been a little bit heroic, a little bit, just a tiny bit. Um, learning songs while uh, breastfeeding and rocking and putting and putting babies down, and I also have a two and a half year old at home. So life is full. Oh my life goodness. is full. Her name is Talia. The baby. Yes, it's not is. a beautiful name. Just love yeah. that name. Um, Sophie, I know that. Well, I think of the song that you're about to sing mm -hmm. as. Babushka watches the baby while Mamushka entertains the soldiers. But uh, I, I know that's not the true name of the song. I'm going to ask you a later, little later on uh, to give me the true name of the song to introduce mm -hmm. your next performance. But before we do that, um, do we know if the baby's a contralto or a soprano as yet? The baby now produces very annoying sounds that cannot be characterized <laughs> Um, but um, we'll see. My son is extremely musical. My two and a half year old, he sings along to Stevie Wonder tunes in tune, and his favorite artist is James Taylor. So we've 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 done things right, at least there up until go. this point. Hopefully, she uh, she uh, she's the same. She's certainly surrounded by music all the time. As is my now, son. this question is slightly off the track, but what do you think about? Uh, musical training for small children. For example, did you mm. yourself take singing lessons? Not as a kid, and I actually feel very strongly that we shouldn't try to force it, vocal training on children because it kind of teaches them to sing in a way that's potentially unnatural as their voices evolve and develop and change. Mm -hmm. um, but singing for fun is, is an absolute must, and I encourage everybody to encourage their yeah. kids to do that. And in terms of musical training, for sure, I, we, we will have our kids in violin or piano right. lessons. My husband's pushing for drums. I'm less enthused. <laughs> he goes to the office all day, so of course he's cool with drums as I stay at home and have to put in headphones. But, but certainly music is an absolutely invaluable part of our lives, and our kids are going to enjoy it. You know, I agree with you totally about musical education for children. Mm. Actually, just in terms of training for the arts, if you have a musical prodigy, great. You have to get them the teacher, but the right teacher. Mm -hmm. But I know of so many people who have really been turned off of yes. music by the wrong teacher, who someone who forces something on them that they're not yes. ready for. Don't kill the joy. If you kill the no. joy, I don't care how talented your kid is. He's no. not going to, or she, they're not going to pursue it. No. It's got to be fun. 
So what do you see the future of this project here, Yiddish Glory? Where do well, you see I, it taking I, you? Um, we're going to take over the world, okay? <laughs> we're thinking small here. Um, well, there's some wonderful people that are extremely committed, involved, um, from Anna, who sort of conceived of the project, to Dan Rosenberg, who put together the band, um, to... Um, Svetlana Dvaryetska, who's uh, from Show One Productions, to Zoomer Media, who's gotten behind it in a really big way. So I feel like we can, we can tell the story in a meaningful way, certainly across the city and potentially, potentially elsewhere, because it's a story that has to be told. It Very few to. people know about the Soviet Jewish experience. Okay. Sophie, now tell us the real name of the song that you're about to sing. So it's called Jana Pishet Muzu, and it's a song r written by a woman that sort of, she's envision she's sitting at her sewing machine, and her husband has gone off to war, and she's trying to have a conversation with him. She's imagining what he's going through. She's hoping he's killing all kinds of Nazis. And um, it's generally an optimistic song. Great. Um, so here it goes. I look forward to it. Thank you. Vocalist Sophie Millman with the Yiddish Glory Band. You may have heard, we're going to take the world, right? Have you heard that yet? A couple of times. We have another of the recently discovered songs about World War II. This one concerns a soldier who's writing a letter to his wife describing how his enemies in East Prussia are running away like poisoned mice, and yet they are still finding and getting rid of them. 
the Yiddish Glory Band. Bin ich jetzt in Misrach preisen, mir geh schon no bitz bitzlach Hitlers deutschen Land zerreißen, mir geh schon no bitz bitzlach Hitlers deutschen Land zerreißen, mir euch sei versichten, wie unsere oben maßen weiß. Dei, wo meine, du sollst wissen, wie sie läufen wie die Mais. Wie versammte Mais sie läufen in die in die Spalten, mir aber sei ob suchen und sei so sich behalten. Mir aber sei ob suchen und sei so sich behalten. Mir gib schon mit euch Rahmen, all das Beis, die Breine Zore, weil mir schon Hitler unterschlagen, die wilde Haie in ihr Nore. Stern, unser Glück und unser Ruh, ob mir nur geduld, man treue Weib noch a Kapelle war zu, ob geduld, man treue Weib noch a Kapelle war zu. Soy Korolenko featured with the Yiddish Glory Band. We're going to take just a short break, then more music, and you have some other folks to talk to. I certainly do. We'll be back. I must hold my mic up to my mouth. Since Hebrew has been uh, revived in Israel, what's happening to the Yiddish language in the world? 
Well, actually, Yiddish is being, is, uh, being revived as well. Also in Israel, uh, we see a, a large number of young people going back to Yiddish. Also in uh, Canada, where we have both the older generation speaking Yiddish still around, and younger generation being interested in the culture that uh, has so much potential and has so much relevance to today's world. Fight for justice, equality, um, uh, hoping for better life for everybody. All these are values of Yiddish culture that have strong resonance today. So we're very happy about that. Anna, I know you have uh, um, courses in the UFT, in the University of Toronto, um, courses of Yiddish. Will you have courses, special courses of Yiddish literature? Yes. Not only that, we also teach special courses on Soviet Jewish history and culture. And now all these songs are going to be a firm part of the curriculum. And also all our courses on the Holocaust, right? Professor Bergen is sitting here. Uh, my colleague, close colleague, I think we're going to teach this uh, Yiddish music very, very soon. Uh, this is a question for the musicians mostly. Uh, I, I wonder how hard it is or how difficult it is to put uh, songs that had no, um, words that had no um, music to them to music. So how, how hard was it to match the words to the music? Three minutes to air, three minutes. So it is a pretty intuitive thing. Uh, first of all, we had to imagine how would those mostly amateur singers or amateur poets, the authors of lyrics, how would they sing these songs, apparently using some popular tunes from Yiddish or Soviet or both culture? Sometimes there could be some classics, like uh, mm, Sergei has just said the music, uh, the song that Sergei just said has a musical classic, famous Russian 19th century composer, Mikhail Glinka, but it was very largely performed and popular in the pre-war Soviet Union, which was the reason for us to choose this melody for the song. Some songs are Yiddish folklore. Some songs are iconic Soviet wartime songs, like Katyusha, which was fused with Tumbalalaika in the song that I have just said. So these are just some examples how we work with those. It's, it's uh, how uh, it's the voice of, of the heart, as it were and archaeological science, yeah. There is also a good history on that uh, same methodology. In the ghetto, we created masses of songs, and we used either old Yiddish songs or old Ru or Russian songs, and uh, like Katyusha and so on, and created new words to them, words yes. which refer yes. to the actual suffering and what was going on in the ghetto and hundreds of songs were created, even in those terrible circumstances. So you are following in a good tradition. <laughs> Thanks for mentioning that it's all about continuity and contiguity. And the other thing is, uh, I mean, contiguity, it's my English. I didn't mean a pun, I didn't mean any pun. And the other thing, and the other thing is, we have some newly created song. Yesterday, Yesterday, we got acquainted with a beautiful person, uh, Holocaust survivor, uh, Alex Levin, and Sergei sang to him his newly composed by Sergei song uh, about Kazakhstan. And uh, Alex said, Kobale Farstanen. He said he understood Yiddish.
Here we are in the Zoomer Concert Hall with a super group of singers and musicians presenting Yiddish songs from World War II, songs that were believed to be forgotten and lost to history forever. And next, we have another rediscovered song about storms which flood the roads, but those storms will not stop the soldiers until every enemy has gone. <laughs> After Welt wette der Stil, lass mit euch gischen die Peritzen. Arsch wog schrecken, arsch wog schrecken, fahr trunk in Aue weg, fahr trunk in Aue weg. In lang fett gehen der Faschistes, wer um sein Geschweck. In lang fett gehen der Faschistes, wer um sein Geschweck. Feuerbech und Schwäbe, bis wann ein Hitler und ein Knorr nicht gieche ist das Leben. Der Mabel gist und gist und gist, dich mare son gezeugen, dich mare son gezeugen. Wenn's wird verschlink in alle Schlecks, wird er ruhig sagen beugen. Wenn's wird verschlink in alle Schlecks, wird er ruhig sagen beugen. A song called The Storm, featuring Isaac Rosenberg and uh, Soy Korolinko and the Yiddish Glory Band as we continue. More of the story. Once again, here's my co-host, Marilyn Lightstone. I'm someone who stands in awe in front of musicians of great accomplishment. 
Gentlemen, I salute you all. Uh, I'm going to do two interviews now, but these two gentlemen have never worked together previously, so I will interview them separately. The first is going to be Alexander Sebastian, who is one of the virtuosos of the accordion internationally. Extraordinary. <laughs> Hello, Alexander. How are you? I'm very well. Now, you are, I understand, originally born in Minsk. Yes, Minsk, that's from Minsk, and Belarus. you are now with us in Thornhill. Yes, that's when true. did you arrive in Canada? Uh, I came to Canada back in 2001. So you were a very little boy. You know, wow! Well, yeah. I just look young, but I'm not that <laughs> okay. that young. <laughs> Alexander, when did you start to study the accordion, and why did you choose that particular instrument for yourself? Well, um, being born in Belarus, uh, accordion was a very famous instrument and popular, and my dad actually played an instrument. And um, that was the sound that I grew up with. Okay. Now, the accordion, I think of it as being a rather large instrument. Are there small ones for little boys and girls? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, I started on a tiny one, and uh, the accordion kind of grew up with me. It got bigger and heavier. <laughs> yes. What is your favorite? I know you do everything. You do, you do modern stuff. You do pop stuff. You play with Quartetto Gelato, I yes, know. Yes, I do. One of my very, very, very most favorite groups. So... Um, if you had to say three pieces of music that are my absolute favorite, what would you choose? Well, uh, it's so hard. I know, there's so much uh, music. Well, um... Just off the top of your head. Well, off the top of my head, probably Organ Tegat and Fugue in D minor by G.S. Bach. Um, Rachmaninoff, um, Russian Song. And um, probably Tchaikovsky Symphony Number no. 6. A pretty good choice, I would say. Thank you. Well, we're very glad that you chose to come to Canada. Thank you so much, Alexander. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. My, my next interviewee will be the extraordinary gentleman standing in that corner, Sergei Erdenko. Sergei, would you join me at the microphone, please? Yeah. This gentleman has a pedigree that is incredible. I, from what I understand, your family has been making gypsy music for 300 years. Is that so? Maybe more. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your grandfather, because I know he had a relationship with Leon Tolstoy, whom everyone, even people who do not speak Russian, know who Leon Tolstoy was. And tell me what Leon Tolstoy said to your great-grandfather. Uh, first, uh, in 19th century, gypsy music was incredible, popular, popular in, in Russia. And, yes. Uh, all uh, writers and musicians and uh, composer, they make uh, like uh, gypsy uh, tunes or songs or opera like this. We're getting you a little closer to the microphone, yeah, if you would. Key. So Tolstoy asked your great friend, I believe, what to, to write a Kaddish or to write a Jew. He himself was not Jewish, your great grandfather, but he was asked by Tolstoy to write a piece of Jewish music. Yes, I know because uh, before, again, say, uh, before revolution, uh, mostly gypsy and Jewish musician was like a folk musician. Mm -hmm. And they play like Lesmer or uh, like uh, Lautari. Uh, it's different part of uh, music, but it's based off uh, uh, like Romanian and Jewish gypsy, like it's very, very interesting mix. And they play like in this part. And uh, my grandfather was the uh, first gypsy person who has uh, best education. I believe he was the first um, professor of what in, in Romani yeah. studies yes, at the university in, in yeah, Russia? Professor is Moscow uh, Consortium, and also he was uh, number one who, uh, to, who have a first prize in, in Russia, like a musician. Now, I've been doing a lot of research, you know, on, on YouTube about all these gentlemen that we see here today um, because I wanted to really know who they were, what, they, what their hearts said to us. This fellow the, and his trio, Loiko, go to YouTube. It's, it's I mean, the music is extraordinary, absolutely breathtaking. In addition to that, you have played with some of the greatest musicians of our century. You've performed with Ravi Shankar. You perform with Stefan Grappelli, who is one of my great, great favorites, and at the Yehudi Menuhin Festival. I mean, that what a great, great man, what a great soul. And I don't know if you remember this, I don't know how long ago it was, because he's been gone for a while now, but when he introduced you, the great Menuhin, he said that he felt that his Jewish roots and your gypsy roots were joined together, that you, you shared a, a common soul, that you both came out of a climate in which there was a great deal of oppression of your people, 
and that you you understood one another. Of course, it's uh, always a gypsy and uh, uh, Jewish musician was like one family, and the homes stay like near because we all these people very friendly. And for me, it's very important what we play now. Uh, and I mean Loiko. Uh, to, uh, my dream is to bring uh, gypsy music in classical way, in classical yes. stage. And for this reason, we now play with orchestra and with different, and I suppose maybe we will come to Canada and bring in, play in symphony orchestra oh, together. Oh, please, please, please. Use two violins and a guitar. And I, I must, your jaw will drop. I mean, it just just the sheer, not only the, the beauty of the sound you make, but the sheer speed at which these fellows can play. It's, it's totally mind-boggling. Well, thank you so much for joining us here. And um, we hope to see you again in, yes. soon in Canada with the Toronto Symphony Orchestra or whoever. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Fascinating stories indeed. And we have yet another of these recently discovered Yiddish songs. Now, this one is about a young couple. He's saying goodbye as he prepares to depart for the war. And she's promising that she will wait for him. I'll wait for you. I hope so. Here again, Yiddish Glory Band. <laughs> Wonderful Sophie Millman with the Yiddish Glory Band. We have yet another song from World War II. This is about a Red Army soldier who returns from the war to his native Kiev, only to find that all of his family members have been killed. It happened so often. Ja, 
ich von Front mit der Gräuser frei. Was ist mir gekommen, die Schuld? Was ist mir gekommen, die Schuld? Oi, wie ich geh ja rein in Stadt und frag auf meine Hegene, man entfernt mir als keiner Zenito. Oi, wie ich geh ja rein in Stadt und frag auf meine Hegene, man entfernt mir als keiner Zenito. Bin ich geblieben stehen mit der Gräuse gewein, in Arzt not geöffnet sich ein Wind. In Arzt not geöffnet sich ein Wind. Oi, na wasser Seite, ich gib a guck, stell mir sich vor, mein Weib mit meiner Inzekins. Oi, na wasser Seite, ich gib a guck, stell mir sich vor, mein Weib und meine Inzekins. Was ist das für ein Zorn, auf uns geworden? Was ist das für ein größer Gesar? Was ist das für ein größer Gesar? Oi, von dem größer Zorn, seinen viel Menschen aber die Form, die Verbliebene seinen Weg in ein paar Jahr. Oi, von dem größer Zorn, seinen viel Menschen aber die Form, die Verbliebene seinen Weg in ein paar Jahr. Oben geklappt auf Tomaten, die Menschen oben gesehen vor sich dem Teut. Die Menschen oben gesehen vor sich dem Teut. Oi Blut hat sich gegossen von alle Seiten, von Blut ist die Erde geworden rot. Oi Blut hat sich gegossen von alle Seiten, von Blut ist die Erde geworden rot. Der größer Weitig ist auf Weibig verblieben, was das Deutsch hat vergossen Blut. Was der Deutsch hat vergossen Blut. Oi, mit unseren Tränen soll die Erde verschlossen werden, als die Lebedicke soll schon wärm gut. Oi, mit unseren Tränen soll die Erde verschlossen werden, als die Lebedicke soll schon wärm gut. Ober unser Säune sucht wieder noch a Säune. Er will mit sie machen ein Hand. Er will mit sie machen ein Hand. Oi, wie lang wir sie wollen leben, weil sie das nie der Leben. Sie wollen kein Mal nicht sein in unser Land. Oi, wie lang wir sie wollen leben, weil sie das nie der Leben. Sie wollen kein Mal nicht sein in unser Land. Soli Korolenko and uh, the Yiddish Glory Band, Marilyn, I know that uh, I have certainly appreciated learning this story and hearing all this wonderful music. I feel as if I've been part of something historic, really, a moment, it in, is special indeed. moment in time. Thank you all, the studio audience here today. Have you enjoyed yourself? I do want to remind you there is a live concert version of today's performance. It's Wednesday, uh, January 27th this week. It's at the Richmond Hill Center for the Performing Arts, produced by Show One Productions in collaboration with the University of Toronto. I'm Bill Anderson. Thanks to all of our great musicians. Special thanks to you, Marilyn Lightstone. My pleasure. And now, stay tuned to the radio. On the new Classical FM, it's more of my show, Bill's Classical Jukebox, with your requests after this.
خود شتور می میرگی برات این آجیه آره اون خبری شاید بود اتی سیس دوالا کازاکستان Si sa zamila, a zamila, a rumi delka i vjela, berk mi diknechi in bišnice, so gidek bi. Sovietische Unkene, Unkene Lenin, Lenin Stoire, Lenin Stoire. Ay alle Menici, ay seinen Brüdern, von Gegenden, von Gemahme. Ta 
Jeep. Und mein Bilder rufen, ich hab sich schon geliebt in der Maschine. Von dem Ball an den Zeilen, an den Zeilen. Jetzt kommt so, er mich spock in der Kindle. Bei uns bist du ein Bruder, ein Bruder, ein Bruder. Ich hab sich schon geliebt in der Maschine. Von dem Ball an den Zeilen, an den Zeilen. Jetzt kommt so, er mich spock in der Kindle. Bayern bist du, ein Bruder ist, ein Bruder ist. Zum neuen Jahr kann ich jederlich Absurde euch ansagen, Absurde euch ansagen. Genug uns schon zu jossern, Genug uns schon zu klagen, Genug uns schon zu jossern, Genug uns schon zu klagen. Genug schon zu beweinen, unsere liebe Teute, unsere liebe Teute, die Oberhand wird nehmen schon, die Arme, die Reute, die Oberhand wird nehmen schon, die Arme, die Reute. Kann uns 
Bergen, nor ba Nacht in a schlechten Cholim, ba Nacht in a schlechten Cholim, a suchen wei wet im sein, a wet schön werden Cholim, a suchen wei wet im sein, a wet zu werden Cholim, Cholim Frieden auf der Welt, dem Teitschel auf Zeloches, dem Teitschel auf Zeloches, Hitler warf den Hitz und Geld und erkennen Skoschen in Tochas. Hitler warf den Hitz und Geld und erkennen Skoschen in Tochas. Im Jahr kann ich jeder Lach absurde euch und sorgen, absurde euch und sorgen, genug uns schon zu jossieren, genug uns schon zu klagen, genug uns schon zu jossieren, genug uns schon zu klagen. Scholl im Frieden auf der Welt, im Teitschel auf Zillaches, im Teitschel auf Zillaches, Hitler warte es in Hitz und in Kelp und erkennt ins Kuschen in Tochas. Hitler warf den Hitz und in Kelp und erkennt ins Kuschen in Tochas. Da, 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 da,